Hi there. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts. I'm sitting here in my yarn shop, surrounded by gorgeous yarns. Um, we have new yarns, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. I just wanted to uh, remind people about some workshops that are going on. Um, the Bruce Weinstein, which we've advertised already, uh, workshop is filling up. You have the option for all day or half a day. Both include lunch that he makes, and the food is delicious, and he's um, incredibly sweet and entertaining and very knowledgeable. Um, so I think he, he's always been well received here, and people just love him. So if you're interested, don't wait. You should um, sign up. Uh, coming up in um, April, a couple of things. I'm going to be doing two um, workshops, sock workshops, and I'll show you in a minute one of them. We're going to do basic toe up for those people, magic loop workshop. But then we're going to do some, we're going to go beyond basic socks and do, I have three choices of patterns that have, um, and I'll show them in a minute. Um, and completely drew, I, we um, don't have the dates for that yet. And um, we're going to, in May, be doing um, embroidery on knitwear. So that's exciting, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. And let me tell you about a, a new uh, knitting class. You know, we have many during the week. We have one on Monday night that op has openings, one on Wednesday night that has openings. All the others are full, so we've started a new class on Tuesday afternoon. And I believe it's from 1 to 1.30 to 3.30, I believe. Um, we'll put a correction if that's wrong. Anyway, there's spaces in that. So you can be a beginner, um, or you can be just a regular knitter who wants um, more instruction and people to knit with. So um, sign up if you're, if you're interested. I wanted to show you some new yarns. This is a new colors in an old yarn um, of a yarn that I just adore. And it's called Sammy. It's an organic, it's Peruvian Pima organic cotton. And we got new colors. It's a DK weight. So there are, um, let's say 21 stitches, but I, I, we've knitted at a DK. Um, one of the, um, and of course, people argue about what's DK, what's worsted. I go, I always go by stitches per inch or stitches over four inches. Um, one of the things we did last year in it, and I thought it was gorgeous, was the Anchor Summer Tea. And um, I threw it in the washer, it came out beautifully. I don't put things in the dryer. Um, I don't ever recommend that because these are hand knits and you don't want them being tossed around in the dryer unless you're trying to shrink them, and I have done that before, or if I'm trying to get it a little bit smaller. And you can only really do that on certain fibers anyway. But I wanted to show you the colors that we have. Um, this one's called Cherry Sunset. Beautiful pink. Oh, another, um, I just thought of another pattern that I like a lot, which is Sunshine, Sunshine Coast, which would be a great summer knit. But there are so many summer tees that are out there in DK weights, so you could use this. And a lot of these colors play really well together, so you can do something that's striped. This one's called Amethyst, and this is Sea Foam. I think we've had that before. This one, I love this. This is called Honey Sunset. Look at that with this. Ooh. This one is called Sand Castle. And this is what we used for the um, anchor um, summer tea. This is called chalk. And this is perfect to go with everything you have in the summer. Um, and this color just looks so pretty with all the other colors. This one, I may have to make something in this color. This is coral, which is pretty. I did knit a sweater last year in this. This is called bubblegum which rem it's reminding me I need to wash mine. Um, it's sitting in my laundry room waiting to be washed. Oh, 
For, yeah. Um, it was Melanie Berg, I believe. It was Pink Power. Was it had cables in the front? Cancer. It was for a breast cancer fundraiser, and this is called Sugared Violet. Violet. Anyway, look at these two together. They all play really nicely together. So look at those. Um, and for those people who say, I don't like to knit with cotton, you know, it's too hard on your hands, this is the softest, most lovely cotton you'll ever knit with. And it's nothing like your grandmother's cotton. So I highly recommend um, this to people. Another thing, an old yarn, but we got new colors, is the Cardiff Cashmere. And um, we have a sample in a, in a um, cowl that I thought uh, was a really beautiful in this yarn. And it's called Super Ellipse. I think it's by, oh, her name went right out of my head. But isn't that beautiful? And who would think? You wouldn't think of putting a red or pink and orange together, but I think it's very striking. So I wanted to show you some of the colors we have. Well, we have, of course, this is called Neve, which is a white. This is, and I think this is a new color, called Memphis. Beautiful foresty green. This one is Romeo. And Latte, which is a beautiful beige. Robin's ooing and aahing over the beige. This is called Hermes. And Scarlata. Beautiful red. See, you could do those two together. That would just make my heart sing, as they say. This is called Mose. Beautiful blue. And then this is a navy called Indigo. But I want to show you some combinations. If you wanted to do this, she has, and if you look at her website, I mean at her pattern, she's got some other similar ones. And darn if I can't remember her name. This is what happens as you get older. You can see it, but it's on the tip of your tongue, but it's not coming out. Um, but here are some beautiful combinations that you could do. I love that one. This is the um, Romeo and the Moe's. Would be really pretty. Or even these two. Or this. Or if you were in a Christmassy mood for wanted to do a Christmas gift, this would be a beautiful one. And I like navy blue and orange. This is Syracuse colors. Anyway, um, they're this, I, I don't remember how many skeins this called for, but there are lots of like wristy patterns that are great. These have, um, I think, 120, uh, 112 meters, which is around 100, 1,820 yards. So it'll make a hat, it'll make wristies, one skein, um, but it's just delicious yarn. We also have, I haven't shown, brought them out, but we also have a lot of other um, cotton yarns in the shop. This is one that I thought was kind of fun. Um, this is, and it's kind it's a chainette construction, which is, a chainette is, it looks like it's knit. And this is called Secret Garden by Lang. We love Lang yarns. They're, um, I think they just have a great, um, uh, I don't know what the word is, store of, um, catalog of beautiful, beautiful yarns. And this one is one that stripes, and it's cotton and polonite. And it is just lusciously soft. And this would be great for a summer cardigan, a summer tee. Um, so this, and I think we're getting more colors. This is the only two that came. This is very original. It's called pink and green. Well, if there's green in there, I'll eat my hat. Um, looks Ish. pink and beige-ish. Anyway, let's see what this one's <laughs> called. This one's called Garden Purples. Mm. 
Again, I think these people were colorblind. Well, there's a little lavender, but it's mostly like a seafood foam green. I wonder if we mislabeled them. Oh, you know what? <laughs> no, you know what? Fiola named them. They didn't, Lang doesn't name them. <laughs> so, so I think we need to talk to Fiola about her. So she what was, is Chainette? So Chainette is um, a knitted, somehow knitted into a chain. Um, and I don't know that you can, we can even get close enough for you to see it. Um, what's nice about um, this one, particular one, isn't like the others. Some of them are chainette and then they have blown fibers into them. And it makes them really nice and warm because they store heat in all those spaces. This is not the case with this. This is kind of flat, so it's not, it's good for summer. It's not going to store the heat, no. Um, but it's super soft. I thought one thing that would be fun, this is something that we knit in a yarn we have called Lumi, um, which has golden, but this is the patty sweater. I thought this would be fun to do. It'll be, have some nice stripes, and it'd be great to wear in the summer with or without like a t-shirt underneath. So anyway, and this again is a is 21 stitches over 4 inches. So it's got leeway in there, depending on what you want to knit. And remember, when you're doing summer garments, very often the gauge doesn't seem to go with the yarn because a lot of summer things are knit very loosely and have big, um, bigger stitches. They're meant to wear with like a, a tank underneath. Um, and they, so they, the gauge isn't always going to, it's going to, you'll look at it and you'll say, well, wait, why are they recommending this yarn? Well, they want you to knit, knit it at a bigger gauge than what the yarn calls for. So don't be, you know, uh, don't be put off by that because there's a reason. Um, I mentioned that um, we're going to do beyond, a workshop called Beyond Basic Socks. So I came across, and this is going to be toe up. I came across a um, pattern that had three different um, interpretations of basically the same sock, and it's called Storm Season Sock Collection, Toe-Up Construction. And I really do like the toe-up construction because it allows you to um, make your ankle as um, you can judge by what you have left and keep knitting the ankle or the leg of your sock. Whereas if you go top down, you're kind of locked in to um, what you've done. Uh, and if you end up at the end after you're doing two socks and you have a lot of yarn left over, you go like, ugh, I wish I had done it the other way so that I could extend the leg further because some people like a, a longer leg. Anyway, this particular one is I'm doing the first of three. And I'm doing the first one, this is called Lightning Socks. So I've begun this. It has, as you'll see on the um, picture, it has cables in the leg. And it starts out with, and I think this is a good thing for socks, f just a stockinette on the foot. I don't think you want ribbing on your foot or a pattern where it's on your, um, the sole of your foot. So this has um, a ribbing, a two by two ribbing on the front of the sock and then it evolves into cables. So I've gone this far on it, this my toe. And I love this idea of, you know, a different color on your toe and on your, um, on your heel. And I think it's a short row heel. I haven't gotten that far yet. But that's what we'll be doing um, if I decide, but I'm pretty, sh pretty committed to this one, that this is what we'll do. You'll have one of three choices. Um, to do in the workshop. So we're going beyond the basics in um, so sock. What will the basics cover? The basic, um, cover, the basic will cover um, the um, cast-on, the magic cast-on, um, and knitting a toe-up sock and a heel with the heel flap and the, um, we'll turn the heel and you'll learn all of that, you know, basic 
to, to know how to knit a basic sock. We've done several of these workshops, so if you've done it already, you probably don't need to do it again. We'll probably, this is, I'm knitting in a sock weight on a size 2 needle. In the basic sock class, we'll use a worsted weight, unless you like knitting on size 2 needles. You can do that, but I think for your first sock, doing a worsted weight goes faster, for one, and it's easier to see the stitches. It's the whole deal is much easier. So that's something to look forward to. I've almost finished my cumulus blouse, and some of you, or whatever it's called, blouse, shirt, sweater, with the round neck. But you'll see I didn't follow the pattern, and those of you who know me know that that's something I often do. And I learned something. I Instead of doing the um, I-cord bind off, did not want an I-cord at the bottom because they tend to curl up. And I love a twisted rib, so I'm doing, I did a twisted rib. Interestingly, though it doesn't look so much so different now, but I used my shorties, my Chowgu shorties. And they have two size tips, and on one of them, I believe it's this one, I used the smaller tip, which was with a, with an eight or nine inch cable, um, and it was, it was hard to do. And I couldn't find my six inch, or the, Four inch. the larger ones, they're not, I forget what they are, they, they give you two sizes, so there's a small size and a little bit larger, and the larger ones are, and I should know this, but I don't, are easier to um, control and to knit. So, and my shorties, I'll just show you, we, we can get them here in the shop for you. Um, but they come with several shorter cables, and I believe this is what I did. The second sleeve on the longer of the um, needles, because the shorter ones, I'll just show you how short they are. So they're very, I think they're pretty hard to hold on to. So see how little they are compared to the longer, and they give the dimensions, but I forget. You'll see if you buy them, but and you can buy extra. Um, it's the twelve inch. You can buy different. Cords. So, um, if you can, and you can buy interchangeables, but th I love this little kit. In any case, on the first sleeve, I used the short one, and on the second sleeve, I used the bigger one, and it might not be the longer needle. It came out a little bit looser, so it's not quite, I don't think, and as I Put it on and wear it. I don't think I'm going to notice a difference. Um, I could block this one out a little bit um, when I do the blocking. But it was an interesting exercise in seeing how um, using those shorties, you know, using the tiny one compared to the big one. I don't think I'm ever going to use the tiny ones. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, I loved this for the sleeve. This was the whole sleeve. They went, they go so fast. But that's not why I brought this, this out. I wanted to show you, and by the way, I think this sweater fits so well. And I'm thinking already that I'm going to make something else in this pattern. Probably not, this is a real true winter sweater because it's um, a, a fingering weight with a Surrey alpaca. And it's fluffy and warm as all get out. So. What I wanted to show you was picking up, and this one I have to wing it because it, um, although I suppose I could look at how they were doing it with the I cord, but I'm going to wing out how much, how many to pick up um, going around. So when you're picking up on a curve, it's a good idea to, I think, to like knit three, skip one, and to be careful how you're picking it up. So I've been doing a knit three. I've already picked up here, and I insert my needle. So I'm going to skip one, and I go in, and I try to get 
If I go in and grab these two strands right here, you sometimes can get a hole, but if I can get like in the middle of them, you have to play around with this. So I'm going to do one, two, three, and if you're at a place where there was some decreasing, if you get into the, it looks like it's almost a little knot. If you can get into that, it's a good idea. So there are three. But you want this to be a nice curve. So I'm going to skip one. I also want it to be, um, if I did it stitch per stitch, you know, one for every stitch, it might be the, um, and so here's a place where there was probably a decrease. So I'm going to go right into the middle of that. I'm not going to go into that space. I'm going to go into this. Pick that up, and then I'm going to go down here into this one. So I've got, mm, maybe, and so this is the nice thing about doing these. You can take a look and see how does it look. I think there's too much of a space between there. So I am going to have to go into that bigger space. So as I go along here, I'm still wherever I can trying to go in that knotted. Looks like a knot, but it isn't really. It was where there was a de decrease, I think. But it's always good to get those spots. So you can see. So here it was kind of straight along there, but here's where there were some decreases, so I want to be aware. So I'm going to skip one and go in here, one, maybe I'll grab that. But you can look and see, you want to make sure this is a good edge, that it looks nice. Um, and this would be good, this would be a good pickup for, for ribbing. I think what I'm going to do is kind of a rolled neck, which would be knitting um, stockinette, or knit, doing knit all the way around, and then casting off, and it will roll under and make sort of a faux looking um, I-cord edge. There, and I'm going to go here. And now, I'm getting to the point, and I think I would do this on the back. I might, so these are rows as opposed to stitches along here. We weren't going into rows, although maybe, a, no, we weren't. So now we're going into rows. And um, when you do that, you're probably going to want to do one, you're going to do stitch for stitch across. And I'll do that across the back, too. Um, very often you'll find um, when you're doing a sweater, sometimes these stitches are on hold, and they'll tell you to just knit right off the, um, the holder. So here I think I'm going to do a, a stitch for every row I'm going to pick up. And the, the beauty of doing this is that you can look at it, and if you don't like the way it looks, take it out. So you can see here I'm doing a stitch per row. Oh, there's the other one. Um, so that you get a nice, even edge across here. And I don't want it to pucker, so I'm not going to do the, my formula that I was doing three stitches and skipping one. And you can, if I wanted this to be, if I wanted this neckline to be a little tighter, um, I could have done, well, I could have done two and skip one. I could fool around with my formula. The other thing I can do on this, on my, so I'm going to pick up all the way around and do a, a knit of, a row of knitting. I can also add some decreases in there. If I want the neck, the neck to be um, smaller, 
which I don't think I do because when I tried it on, it was quite, I, I quite liked where the neck was. But if I did, I could add in some decreases, which then would bring the, the neckline in a little bit smaller. So anyway, that is my um, cumulus and with the round neck and again omitting the um, I-cord. So there you have it, picking up stitches around a for a collar, around the collar, a neck band, I should say. Um, it's pretty easy, and the nice thing is, if you don't like the way it's looking, you can pull it out and, you know, experiment with how you're picking up the stitches. I used to see people doing it with a crochet hook. That's just an extra step you don't need to do. This is simply just sticking your, your inserting your needle from front to back and wrapping your yarn around and pulling it through, and then you have stitches on your needle. Anyway, I recommend this sweater. A lot of people are doing it. It was a lot of fun um, to do, and um, I love the result. So I'm going to come up with, in probably some of our, I'm, this knits at a worsted weight, I think, on a size 8 needle was what I did. I think it calls for 18 stitches over 4 inches. I may fool around and do, use a lighter yarn, in which case I would probably do, which would mean I'd have fewer, more stitches per inch, making it smaller. So then I would probably do a larger size. In any case, um, I hope this was informative for you. Um, remember, um, if you like our uh, podcast, please um, subscribe, like us. Um, if you have projects, oh, by the way, if you um, are doing some people have already submitted their finished Petite Knits um, project, um, we have, I think there are instructions on our website of how to submit your projects. Under events. Under events. So look at that. We've um, been doing some fooling around with updating. We're doing some updating on our website. And again, um, those of you who ordered yarn for our uh, during our sale last Sunday, there are still a few order orders that are going out. We had some inventory problems, so we had to order more yarn. Um, rest assured, you will all receive, we hope, your correct order. We did screw up a little on a few, um, but we had an awful lot of orders, and this was our first time doing it, and the next time we do it, we'll will be better. But you did get a good discount. So hope everybody enjoyed what they got. I hope you have a great week of knitting. Um, it's raining here today. This is Thursday we're filming. And I'm going to go home tonight and put, no, it's Wednesday. I'm rushing the week. But I'm going to go home tonight and put my feet up and do some knitting, I think, on my sock. Anyway, have a good one. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.